I begin by um, identifying and right-sizing all the pieces. Uh, then I will organize the elements, uh, adjacencies and separation, what needs to be near each other, uh, what needs to be apart, very critical considerations. It's not un at all unlike an analogy um, of, of anatomy. If one thinks of the organs of the body as the rooms in a hospital, if they're the wrong size or in the wrong place, if the lungs or the liver or the heart or the brain is the, is the wrong size, things won't work. If they're in the wrong place, uh, you can't uh, get them to function. Uh, finally, the circulation system that, that connects them all is so important, the circulatory system in the body. So once I right-size the elements and identify their correct size, know where they need to be next to each other, apart from each other, then I divine, define the circulation system that connects them, and that typically leads to a functional circulation system. My next and probably my final step here uh, is to think of the three major experiences in the hospital and to further refine that plan. The first is the outpatient experience, uh, admit and discharge or check in and check out, uh, the client flow through the hospital, the doctor flow through the hospital, the technician uh, support team flow through the hospital and how they interact with that whole process of the exam room and the reception function. Uh, then we go to inpatient services and do the same thing for the treatment room, the surgery room, dental procedures, um, ICU flow, the recovery sequence from surgery, uh, and then finally the kennel and ward support that's so critical to the inpatient, the inpatient function. This all usually leads me to a functional efficient floor plan in the end.